In this video, we're rounding up every bit of scrapped, unreleased and cut content that we'll never see in Destiny. Not talking about sunset or vaulted content, but things that were actually being made and nearly released, but never did for various reasons. It's a pretty normal thing in all creative industries. But it's interesting to look at things that were left on the cutting room floor and why. If you like learning about behind the scenes development secrets, then this video is for you. There are perks, characters, raids, storylines, expansions, cutscenes, exotics and locations all acts from Destiny 1 and 2. So a lot of things I found that you probably didn't even know existed. During the Destiny 1 beta, there were three features which were removed before release, which was the ability to lock in your perk tree choices. So on weapons, you can see it was called lock in, where it locks your perk options, but it boosts your gun's attack stats. So a little bit like masterworking. On armor, it was called harden, which would boost the defense. And then on subclass trees, the final perk was called illumination, which sealed in the perks and would boost your stats. So Titans would get more armor, Warlocks more recovery, and Hunters agility. And in between the beta and final release in 2014, Bungie scrapped the features altogether. It's pretty obvious to see why. It is a cool idea, but it would destroy the player's choice and ability to customize. Imagine getting a perfect role and now it's locked in on some awful scope or mag option that you thought was good in the first month of release, back when we knew nothing, but especially for subclasses, it would have been a nightmare. There was also a different shader system called Type 1 and 2 coating. So Legendary Armor had Type 1 coating where it could be recolored using version 1 or newer micro-material shaders. Exotics required Type 2 coating, so there were different rarities of shaders, which sounds interesting, especially the fact that you could shade items individually, which wasn't a thing in Destiny 1. Of course, Bungie changed this to be the simple shader system where you just put one on your whole character and that's it. Some players liked it as it looked more consistent all across the board, but it wasn't very customizable. But it's funny that Destiny 1 originally had individual shaders like we eventually got in Destiny 2. A long requested controversial feature that was in very early builds of Destiny was trading. Being able to trade with other players in the tower. You can see it in this menu early on and Bungie mentioned it a few times the ability to gamble and trade. But they eventually decided not to add it because it would massively overcomplicate and devalue a lot of the loot. It would also create a black market. Some players would probably get scammed and tricked so there'd be too much risk of just bad experiences. Bungie even met with Blizzard who obviously know a lot about MMOs and loot economies and they strongly advised Bungie not to add trading to Destiny as it would be a huge mistake and the feature was never added. The early development of Destiny had loads of features and ideas that of course never made it into the full game. We can see imagery screens where you had shoulders and gloves and the titan marks were simply called belts. You can see Osiris as a reputation vendor before the reboot. There are old director screens where the Crucible used to be called the Faction Wars which I talked about in my last video. The Vault of Glass was called the Glass Throne. You can see the original planets and activities from the director screen. There's also concept art from artist Jamie Jones he made in 2008 when Destiny was originally a fantasy game. So one of the playable races was called Tiger Man. There were enemies called the Moth People and of course the fan favorite Giant Frog which we have never seen. Siva was actually a part of the early version of Destiny 2 but was cut before release when they changed the story around. During the reveal event, the menu showed the Exos crash strike on Nessus, saying that Siva Corrupted Fallen made their nest, there's a typo there, in a crashed ship, and we cannot allow Siva to grow a foothold here. So this crashed ship is on Nessus, of course it's Exos Black, and we also have this concept art showing an early version of this crashed ship, with three Siva or Splicer logos on the wing, the shuttle and the watchtower. If you played Rise of Iron, you'll definitely recognize this symbol, and there are also the red Siva vines coming all out from the ship. In the lore, Failsafe and Tara Khan both mention Siva being on board this ship, and we aren't sure why Bungie decides to remove Siva from Destiny 2. Loads of people are always asking for it to return. The closest thing we got was Outbreak Perfected, but originally it was planned to be on Nessus. You probably know that Destiny used to have a completely different story that was scrapped, but also in that original version was a prototype Hive raid that we'll never see. So Luke Smith revealed that Vault of Glass was not supposed to be the first raid and this Hive prototype raid had loads of encounters but was scrapped and some parts of it became Crota's End and King's Fall for the DLCs. One of the encounters became the Fogoth Summoning Pit Strike. You can actually see this concept art that shows the encounter with five guardians which shows this was part of a raid and Fogoth was also massive. He sticks out as much bigger and more raid-like than any other Destiny 1 strike boss which were mostly just regular sized bosses, not as unique, but you can also see in early trailers there was a different room layout and this encounter was mostly finished, so Bungie decided to turn it into a strike and in King's Fall, Golgoroth became that giant ogre they originally wanted to make. 
YouTuber Rocket Sloth spoke to a Bungie developer called Dan Miller who worked on this prototype raid and he said there were enemies with gravity guns that would knock you off platforms and doom buttons that would blow up everything if you didn't interact with them in time, which of course is the annihilator totems found in both Crota and King's Fall. This prototype raid also had a bridge encounter where you carried a big hammer over a bridge and the brutes could only be killed with this relic, which of course became Crota's sword. Interestingly, Crota's oversoul was the final boss room of this raid. It also featured the Course of Oryx opening encounter that ended up being in King's Fall. So some of these parts were added to the game, but most were thrown out and we'll never see again. So this explains why King's Fall was so massive and why Crota's End was so small, because they were originally one, and also why we got back-to-back -back Hive Raids, which they wouldn't normally do. The reason for this being switched with the Vault of Glass was because the original Destiny 1 story had the Hive as the main villain, so naturally they wanted a Hive Raid, but when they rebooted the story, the Vex became the main villain in the final Black Garden mission, so they wanted a new Vex Raid to match it. The original story is another thing that was famously scrapped. Destiny had a very different story up until 2013, which featured the Crow as a Cade-like character, which is why when they resurrected Aldrin, he's now called Crow. This is a callback to his original character. Osiris was also a character on Mercury that you'd do missions for, and the Stranger was his assistant before she was called the Stranger. She was just this robot assistant. The Warmind Rasputin was also an exo scene in this artwork that got kidnapped by Oryx and held on the Dreadnought where the final missions took place and this would lead into that Hive Mega Raid. There were also two Destiny 1 expansions that were scrapped and turned into expansions for Destiny 2 which were Vex Void featuring Osiris on Mercury, this became Curse of Osiris and then Forge of the Gods was renamed into Gods of Mars and eventually became Warmind which was set on Mars. Now, Mars is one of the most interesting examples of cut and scrapped content because in Destiny 1, there was originally supposed to be a new second area on Mars called the Pyramidian, which you can see in this concept art. The Crucible map Crossroads takes place here and you can see the Pyramidian structure in the backdrop and this area is called the Lost Oasis, but multiple Bungie employees anonymously through Jason Shreer revealed that this was cut and moved into Destiny 2 to become Io. This, of course, is where the Pyramidian was and is also called the Lost Oasis, funnily enough, and Io is a very clearly green remake of Mars with the sand and the tree stumps, the Cabal and the Vex, and also in Destiny 1 version it was said that there would be a Cabal base and a Warmind bunker as the Warmind Charlemagne was supposed to have a vault here, but Charlemagne was eventually cut. Bungie initially planned multiple Warmines but later scrapped the others and just had Rasputin. This is a secret unused area in Destiny 2 called the Galaxy Pools. To date, it has not appeared in any content and is only accessible by glitching out of bounds. It's been in the game since 2017, but was only found in 2019 by a player called Froggy, who was trying to get out of bounds into the Shala the Traveller in the dark forest of the European Dead Zone, but he stumbled across this very strange area. It is one of the coolest bases I've ever seen in Destiny, and it looks kind of related to the Nine or the Awoken. You can see the Milky Way galaxy in the distance, which can't be seen anywhere else in Destiny, and Bungie designers obviously spent a lot of time working on this very unique skybox. The only thing that looks a bit similar is where the pyramids were in the end cutscene. It's almost the same spot, but even more strangely, the galaxy moves around the sky, which obviously galaxies don't orbit, so maybe the platform is rotating slowly. So of course this would have had some purpose initially, but seeing as it's been here for 7 plus years means it's probably been scrapped, although it doesn't make sense why it would still be in the game files. There's an alternate version of the famous opening cinematic which shows the scrapped original story in a very early version and in it we can see a rough outline of what they wanted to show of the astronauts landing on Mars and finding the Traveller but instead of seeing the Traveller they see a mysterious woman that's described as a witch speaking an alien language saying the Traveller is coming and then it starts raining. There's also images where you can see the weird alien structure on Mars similar to these concepts we've seen and the creator of the cinematic said the woman is a witch and you can see more of the woman with the white hair that looks a bit like those veiled statues found on the pyramids. Bungie also originally planned five enemy races as you can see the Vex, the Fallen, Cabal Hive and the smoky human figures in the pyramid ships but they scrapped the fifth race. The pyramids could be seen in Destiny 1 loading screens and various artwork but eventually they merged the fifth race into one singular being called the Witness with the black body and the white head and he's basically a collection of this whole race combined into one. There's an alternate second set of the original Vault of Glass armor that was in the game files but never actually got released. According to director Luke Smith, they planned on having two sets of armor for the raid for normal and hard mode, and players for a long time are wondering when this blue gear would be available as they were publicly in the API with the perks, the icons and everything. 
but they decided to scrap this set and only have one bronze set that we all know and it wasn't until king's fall when they did implement two armor sets one for normal and one for hard being the red and white set and the black harrowed set for hard mode and they would do this more often again with wrath the machine with the red and black set and then again with destiny 2's leviathan but the blue vault of glass set is something we'll never see Destiny 1 never had any exotic sparrows, but there was one in the game file since launch that was never actually released. It's called the S99 Dawn Chaser, and for the longest time, people were wondering when it would release, considering it was the only exotic, so people wanted this thing. It had the highest speed and durability of any sparrow in the game. Its description read, the future and all of its promise awaits you. And it also had the unique perk only found on the Vault of Glass Timebreaker Sparrow. This is where you hold down the boost and it goes into overdrive until it eventually explodes, which was pretty funny and couldn't be found anywhere else. Of course, Destiny 2 has plenty of exotic sparrows and now skimmers, but the Dawn Chaser was Destiny 1's only exotic sparrow that never actually got released. There was also an exotic shader added in the Destiny 2 game files in Witch Queen, which was seemingly scrapped a few months later. It's called the Prismatic Shader, and as you can see, it was available in an Eververse package called the Alluring Looks Bundle. The shader had a placeholder icon and its rarity was exotic, which had never been seen before, and the description says it contains one exotic shader. Bungie never released the backstory, but many believe this became the photo finish shader added in Guardian Games around the time it was removed. This is one of the most unique shaders that cycles through colors on glowing armor, but the exotic shader is another item we'll never see. Peter Dinklage, the original voice of the ghost, went through a lot of issues to the point where Bungie eventually scrapped his lines completely from the game. In the Destiny Alpha, he was widely criticized for his lackluster delivery with one of the most infamous lines in the opening mission. That wizard came from the moon. This became an instant meme, so much so that Bungie removed this line and even made t-shirts of the quote, but before the beta, they then edited his voice from sounding like a regular dude talking to you to being more digitized and robotic. This was one of Skywatch's old array stations. This was one of Skywatch's old array stations. When the game released, his voice lines were still criticized, so the following year, with the Taken King, they removed him altogether and replaced him with Nola North to redo all the old lines and has also voiced the ghost ever since. One of the strangest things that we have never got an answer about is something called the Magician. Right before Destiny 2's launch, Edge magazine had a feature talking about their early access to the game and interviews with developers, and they said there's plenty more we can't talk about, one day you must ask us about the magician. I've had this written down in my notes since 2017, waiting to see what this would be, and there's absolutely nothing in the game that has ever released called the magician, so it's still really weird. It could be anything, an exotic, a vendor, a character, maybe it was an early name for something that got changed or maybe it was scrapped, but either way it was really random, something I've always wondered about but I guess we'll never know. Before Forsaken, towards the end of year one, Bungie were actually planning on adding exotic armor catalyst to the game. Developers talked about it in a few live streams and I was actually at a Bungie event where they talked again about exotic armor catalyst not being ready for Forsaken but they were hoping to add them sometime after and they were going to have some slight increase on the exotic perks. One example they said was the Lion Ramparts having even longer boost duration and of course this idea ended up being scrapped probably in favor of just master working armor which gives a similar stat boost but I would imagine balancing wise it would probably be a nightmare if every exotic armor piece had a perk increase or additional perk like the weapons do but it's another idea they never ended up adding. One of the strangest and rarest characters in Destiny was a vendor called Yuna exclusive to mainly Korean and Asian servers. She was kind of like an Eververse Xur type vendor that offered exotics. Most players on Asian servers could visit her, but you can only buy stuff if you're an IGR benefactor, which means internet gaming room or cafe in Korea. So only players in these specific Korean gaming cafes can actually get these items. The exotics were on rotation and were free, but were temporary, so they would disappear and they also weren't upgradable, infusible, or gave materials when they were dismantled. They also wouldn't count to your collection, so they were just basically rented exotics to play around with for a session. But these days, a lot of gaming cafes in Korea apparently don't have Destiny 2 installed anymore, and even if you can find one, people are saying the game still doesn't recognize you as an IGR benefactor, so she basically doesn't work for anyone anymore and is slowly being removed. You might still be able to find her on certain Asian servers, but you can't actually get anything from her without that IGR benefactor status. A lot of players have always wanted to see her added into the rest of the game, but it's very unlikely we'll ever see her added properly. Technically, the biggest piece of scrapped content was Destiny 3, the entire third installment. This was actually in development since 2017, right after Destiny 2 came out. The end cutscene showed the pyramids being activated and heading over, and they were supposed to arrive with Destiny 3. This is basically a roadmap. 
Under Activision, they were always obliged to make a third game, technically even a fourth initially, but Bungie knew this wasn't sustainable to keep jumping games and leaving one behind, like Call of Duty, so they wanted to make Destiny 2 into a live service model which was more sustainable. So after they split with Activision, they decided to scrap Destiny 3 and turn the content they had made into three big expansions, Beyond Light, Witch Queen and Lightfall, which were all about the pyramids arriving and us using darkness subclasses. It is one of the most debated decisions in Destiny's history, whether they should have made Destiny 3 leaving 2 behind, or kept going with Destiny 2 and adding more content in but then having to vault and sunset as we all know, but a lot of people think Bungie might still eventually make a third game but that remains to be seen. The factions were also one of the biggest parts of Destiny that were scrapped by Bungie. I made a whole video covering their origins in Destiny 1 as the faction wars to the faction rallies in Destiny 2, why they were removed and also what they're doing now because not a lot of people know they weren't completely removed and are still hinted to return at some point. You can click here to watch their video. It's a really interesting look at the whole evolution of factions and their future. But don't forget to like the video before you go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.